Hello and welcome to another Comics Burst from the Full Force podcast, sponsored by Distant Planet Comics and Collectibles, where we take an in-depth look at the newest G.I. Joe comics and related titles of the week with me as your host, Chris Death Count McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. And joining me for this episode is Brian, we're gonna need a medic for this one, Hickey. On this instalment of your absolutely favourite kind of burst, we look at issue number nine of Paul Aller's G.I. Joe comic from IDW Publishing. So without further ado, let's get stuck in, shall we? In Nepal, Tunnel Rat has secured crucial intel in the fight against Cobra, with a platoon of vipers and battle androids hot on his heels. Tunnel Rat must traverse the labyrinthine sewers in a desperate attempt to stay alive and ahead of his pursuers. This issue is tense and claustrophobic Joe action at its best. Right, now this is an absolute beast of an issue, uh, written by Paul Aller, artist Ryan Kelly, colours Brittany Peer, letters Neil Uyatake and editor Bobby Kernow. Now, before we get into this, uh, Brian, a bit of a brutal one this issue, isn't it? You know what, this is the issue where you need to let go of whatever you thought G.I. Joe was and all those characters you loved in the 80s because they're all dead! <laughs> True. There's quite a few, um, spoiler alert, there's quite a few deaths in this one. But it's kind of like ripping the band-aid off quickly because you're introduced to them as soon as like you know they're do- they're done. So anyway, before we get into that, let's look at the covers for this particular issue. Um, so we have the first up. We have cover A by Chris Evanhouse, and this is a Battle Android Trooper reflection where you can see clearly Tunnel Rat in the reflection, sort of trying to cover his face a little bit as uh, the light shines on on him. What do you think about this one, Brian? That's an awesome cover. And in fact, I'm actually wondering, does it actually give us a viewpoint? It does. So if you go one bit, if you go to page, well, we'll get to it later, but there's a page where Tunnel Rat, there's a panel where Tunnel Rat goes face to face with a mm. with a bat and he's right up in the face. And this is Chris Evanhouse's interpretation of that, I think, where he's literally about to, you know, pop the grenade on the on the bat. And so it's kind of like the bat's last uh, vision before it's, uh, it gets its head blown off. Chris's work is magnificent. This is a beautiful, beautiful cover here, I think. There's not really a whole lot to say about it, except that it's it's a, it's a great you know take. If it is what I think it is, it's a great take in that scene and beautifully executed by Chris. Absolutely, I have to agree. I like some of the subtle changes in some of the colour on the bat's visor where you see like the different angles. So like you kind of got this like centre kind of piece, which is like one red colour. And then yes. the two side pieces, which are kind of like this uh, slightly different red, which kind of gives it that like angular feel of the visor. And it's just really, yeah, really dark. And yeah, it's a pretty harsh scene as well. But anyway, moving through, we have cover B, art by Freddie Williams II, colours Jeremy Colwell. And this one has a uh, Scarlet on the front cover with, I think, Firewall, and then like working on her laptop with like this kind of matrix style green text all over the, the kind of background and everything. I mean, what do you think about this one? This, again, this is a beautiful cover. It probably you know, it doesn't connect with anything that's in this particular issue, but it's a beautifully illustrated cover, a nice uh, representation of Scarlet here. And again, I like the, um, is it, you said firewall. It could be fade away. I'm not sure. Oh, but sorry, it's, um, sorry. I, yeah, you're right. It's uh, fade away. Sorry, that's just me getting my uh, code names mixed up. It is there's absolutely. There's a lot of code names in this issue. It is absolutely <laughs> fade away. My apologies. Um, but uh, it's a pretty cool cover. Absolutely love this. And of course, we have the retailer incentive cover with uh, art by Scott Drummond, which is a pretty kick-ass looking cover. Yeah, this is really wicked, isn't it? As they're, as they're all kind of like repelling, like, you know, flipping, uh, zipping down a zip line, I should say. You've got uh, Scarlet Tiger and the other characters kind of hidden by the G.I. Joe logo, but there is untainted um, art, I should say. There's, there's art out there, which I actually have here, and I'll be able to tell you who it is. It is Roadblock. So yeah, the, ah. so the the character covered in the background by the the art, and I'll flash up the the untouched art with the no logos on it, and yeah, it's basically a roadblock in the background. Um, there, kind of being covered. What do you think about that one? That is that's beautiful. I love the the angles on that as as they're kind of coming in. You've got this perspective. Well, obviously, roadblock is very small in the distance, you know, behind the logo. Um, Tiger is kind of you know larger than life he's right up front and you can see they're clearly dropping into some kind of cobra facility just the lighting on it is really really nice it's um 
It's, it's a beautiful cover. It almost Three looks ki kick-ass covers here. It almost looks like they're about to smash through the window as well, because obviously you can see there's like reflection um, over Tiger's legs. Yes. And that, that's done on purpose to make it clear that you're actually looking through glass. And I wonder if they're all kind of plowing towards the window but what oh, would, you know, how funny would it, it be is. if he hit the glass and stopped like and everyone just like banged in behind them like lined up that's kind of that's exactly what would happen to tiger but looking at the, at the cover a bit more closely you can see that yes it is glass and the the court that they're, what we're seeing is their reflection the cord they're rappling onto, you can see it's gripped into the glass face. Yes. As coming down over in front of the logo. Absolutely. So yeah, good point. It's uh, so, so we're seeing the reflection and it's, yeah, it's so, so, so yeah, they're, that's what they're, that's their destination. They're going straight for that pane of glass. You know, it's a pretty cool cover. It's amazing, isn't it? We're looking at the reflection of the window as they're attacking it. So it's, you're seeing their reflection and you're looking in the window of a Cobra office is what i'm is what i'm getting at there from that that image and it looks cool. amazing anyway yes so glad we cleared all that up uh <laughs> let's get into the actual issue so this one is kind of it basically kind of kicks you off immediately into the action as so many of uh, paul's issues do um but this one it, the actual first the opening issue the actual opening page is all black so it's kind of like you know what the hell's going on here and you know it's basically it's it's because there's a lot of death going on and in this case uh we're being kind of like led into what is effectively this horrible story where tunnel rat is basically and his team are just being taken out one by one on this mission and just how insane is that opening kind of like intro where he's like he's he's holding heavy duty in his arms and his like guts are everywhere and it's like we're not going to win we, you know we're going to lose this war and then he, he goes through telling all of the the horrible things that have happened to his teammates yeah this is whoa this is i mean hard hitting we go from from black then the next page has got one panel on it the next page has got three panels on it and then you're going to obviously you know four panels and all the pages after that mm. but it's it's kind of the black obviously represents two things i mean is the, the, the blackness of being underground because a lot of this happens underground this particular story and it represents the blackness of death and there's a lot of death in this one as, as we did we say there's a lot of death in this because there's a lot of death spoiler in this. alert i'm also going to do a death count as we go through so heavy duty is uh is first up and first in the up. second page he is dead so heavy duty his has, has bitten the bullet um no pun intended so straight away we've got a, I would say a B-list character, but he has been A-list in other iterations. Heavy Duty, like he was, he was in the Deke cartoon. He was in, he was in uh, a number of different like, kind of instead of Roadblock, you know, kind of during kind of like Spy Troops and Valor versus Venom and all that kind of stuff. So he's a pretty major character, but I'd still probably class him in the B-list. But he's probably one of the higher up ones that die in this issue. What are your thoughts about him taking Heavy Duty out so early on? I was surprised. I would have considered him, okay, so it's not like, well, I mean, Duke has been taken out. You know, <laughs> yeah. There's an A-list character. True. No one is so, safe. Yeah, it's like The Walking Dead. What's, uh, you know, what's Heavy Duty compared to Duke, really, at that stage? But it's, um, it, it, I was surprised. I was genuinely surprised, you know, when you realise on that second page, oh, he's gone. What? <laughs> he's yeah. dead? Yeah, it's pretty it's, shocking. Uh, yeah, totally. And then, and then you're, you know, so, so really what's happening here is that Tunnel Rat has given us a little bit of flashback. And that instance where Heavy Duty's been taken out is pre-mission. So they're on a recce before the rest of the team arrive. And then when the rest of the team do arrive, which is on page three, they, they, they para drop in. Oh. Cobra are waiting for them and they're picked off in the air. Now, I would consider this next uh, character to be taken out, an A-list character. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's definitely bridges that gap. I mean, he was obviously ripcord, it, we're talking about here, but obviously he has been early on in the toy, toy line originally, and obviously, you know, he was a major character in Rise of Cobra, and ripcord has definitely been one of those characters that's been taken from, I would say, the B-list early on into major character levels later on in the G.I. Joe franchise, but I agree with you on that one. I think he's another 
another big one to take to bite the bullet again literally in this sense and that panel of him just falling through the sky with the blood trail yeah, is headshot oh i mean harsh isn't that's it? lethal and of course you know tunnel rat lets us know you know the stealth is gone you know where our cover's blown they know we're coming they have to go to all out brute force to try and, and achieve their mission which is the destruction of a uh, you know, of, of a bat factory. Um, yes. So one of their first strategies is to try and take out the Cobra communications network. And that's when we see dial tone is our next casualty on the list. And, and uh, a big one, yeah. I would consider dial tone to be, you know, okay, maybe not an A-list character, but, you know, up there with, you know, heavy duty, ripcord, dial tone, there's three big names yeah. from the Joe team taken out. We're only on, only halfway through page three at this stage. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? So Dial Tone uh, gets electrocuted whilst taking down the communications grid. And Dial Tone is the female Dial Tone that was um, obviously kind of first introduced, I think, in, again, I think in Rise of Cobra toy line, I think, as well. But maybe prior to that, maybe in one of the comics, I think she was, they kind of made uh, Dial Tone a female character. Um, but again, that's kind of flip-flop back and forward. And, you know, we've had Dial Tone in all sorts of different ways, shapes and forms. But again, yeah, kind of a big character in the G.I. Joe universe for sure. And uh, so that there you go. Like, And then obviously we lead into this Viper who uh, basically is basically saying, there you are. And we flip into what is assumed to be the, what's the word? I suppose the present. The present moment, yeah. Yeah, present of what we're going on. And then, then you've, got, the, you've got Tunnel Rat in the sewer and they have this little back, back and forth and there's a, a little battle and Tunnel Rat uh, kind of comes out on top. Um, and we kind of, give it, we given even more information about the location. Sagamandu in Bantal, which is uh, kind of a really interesting location, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to assume that this is one of these, you know, made up locations. Yeah. But it's a pretty cool looking exotic spot. Of course, it shows the global reach of Cobra. They've got facilities all over the world. And as we're going to learn, this is a, a bat it's, it's, I don't think they produce the bats themselves. It, this produces the brains for the bats. Yes. So the processors that go into the bats uh, is what this facility is. So yeah, Sagamandu in Bantal. Quick little uh, side note here. Ryan Kelly's artwork is fantastic. We'll talk a yeah. bit more about that later. But I mean, it's just have this comment. It's super, super artwork on this. And uh, Brittany Peer knocking it out of the park again with the colours. Have you noticed on all of the little flashback scenes with all the death that the colour changes to kind of a grey gray scale with then the character in like this red and maroony kind of color I, I really like that it kind of really ties That's in all of the flashbacks absolutely together absolutely brilliant and black background as well so in some cases it's a full page is black but when the flashback only happens maybe on a section of a page that section of the page gets a, a black uh, background frame around the panel lovely lovely touches from Brittany like really just really well thought out coloring on, on the pages and we get introduced here to um to like, like kind of like the almost like the bad guy uh, of the issue or the kind of like the the leader I suppose of the vipers in this sense and the, and also the vipers are kind of they've all got their they've all got names so in the the sense of the, the viper that got ta- taken out by tunnel rat under the sewer he's called viper tamang so they've all got the you know I'm, I'm guessing they're they're locals uh, from the area that have been kind of signed up by cobra that's actually a really nice observation chris again part of of the Cobra characters, they all have proper names. They, they don't have, like in Battle Action Force, they'd be called like Dagger or Machete. They'd have like names <laughs> like that. Yeah. Whereas these guys have, you know, real human names. Like Paul Aller has humanized them all, um, which makes, and we've said this a few times on the show, it makes their deaths a little bit more poignant when they're taken out. They're not just, you know, red shirts or gray shirts or blue shirts. They're, they're real people who are just doing a job. Yeah. At the end of the day. And I should also say, we also get a uh, gridiron taken out here. So obviously Captain Gridiron, <laughs> who was a major kind of player in the Deke animation, kind of like the early 90s, kind of like the early 90s G.I. Joe kind of figures. He takes a bullet right in the chest on this one uh, when he was storming through a door, it says. So again, we've lost another <laughs> character. I would probably say in terms of the G.I. Joe as a whole, this is probably, probably more of a B-list character. That's not to take anything away from him. I'm a really big fan of Captain Gridiron. But um, in this sense, like, you know, he's taken out and that we're up to four already on page five, maybe. That's right, page five. And four Joes uh, have bit the bullet, literally. You know, Gridiron, again, he's storming a door. 
it suggests that you know they were waiting for him to come through the door. So it's not really revealed to us at this point how Cobra knew they were coming, but clearly that they knew they were coming and they were well prepared. But even on this page five, the leader of or the the head of this Cobra facility tells us that you know they succeeded in their mission. He has a line here like, you know, we're not going to let them get away. Not after what they did, what they somehow managed to do. They don't get to live. So this guy's on a he's on a vendetta here. He's looking for revenge. He wants to wipe out every single last member of this team at, at this particular point because they've clearly pulled off whatever that mission is they're supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, I should also mention at this stage, I did speak to Paul Aller prior to us recording this, and he said he was umming and erring as to whether to make that major Cobra character, like the one who is uh, kind of the leader of leading the Vipers at the time. He was umming and erring as to whether to make him a named character or like a you know a character from from previous and he decided against it because he kind of thought that uh, he, i don't think he, I, I just think he didn't feel like it was necessary in this sense so um that's why we kind of have this like almost unnamed viper leader in this particular story and as we move past that kind of introduction of him we get this cracking splash page uh, kind of story don't we of tunnel rat and a, and a bat in the sewer which is really fun it's just incredible there's no words even needed on this page the bats track down tunnel rat he takes it the ladder that tunnel rat's trying to use to escape tunnel rat uses the shards of the ladder to kind of fight back and defend himself and then we have that moment where he gets up close and personal with the bat and just pops a grenade onto his chest like some sort of a magnetic explosive yeah and jumps into the water then to try and you know take some cover and boom, the bat's gone. And we get another flashback Yes. in the middle of all this action. So we have Spearhead and Tracker are providing cover for Longarm. And they're both taken out while Longarm is planting the explosive charges. And Longarm didn't get away either, did he? <laughs> no, he couldn't escape the blast. So boom, that's three more Joes. And we're on page nine at best at this rate. Yeah, currently we are at seven deaths already. Yeah, seven deaths. Now, again, like those three particular characters, I mean, Spearhead has had a number of different versions. Tracker's quite a, you know, a, well, I say he, the original character was a he. In this particular story, it's, uh, they've gone, you know, Paul's gone with a female character. And, but I would say that Spearhead is one of those characters who is known for the figure more than any other, you know, he's not really used in other media as such. So probably would kind of class him as a B-list character. Again, another favourite of mine. And obviously his little Bobcat Max, who isn't obviously involved in this particular story. But you can tell that that spearhead with the, the big gun and the and the gear he's wearing with the helmet. And also obviously the mention of Tracker, who originally was a, a male character. Quite a obscure character, I would say. Like again, has an action figure uh, in the kind of, in the vintage styling but hasn't really been utilised that much other than, if, like, I think, very few comic appearances. So in this this sense, we've got a female version of, of Tracker in Paul Aller's book. And again, like another, uh, you know, like you, you've kind of got like a, a couple of B-listers going here in that sense, and or maybe even a C-lister in terms of Tracker. And then Longarm, who, who was drug elimination force from the subset, again, very obscure character, has a very little you know kind of to do in any of the media but again another one bites the dust in this sense i mean what are your thoughts about these these kind of characters being taken out as we go do you think it's effective i think it's actually really clever the way this has been put together i'm gonna to have different feelings from some joe fans like remember i'm a battle action force fan i'm an action force fan none of these characters ever featured in action force yeah certainly not in any of the media that was produced for Action Force. So I don't have any sort of attachment to these guys, but the fact that of this entire team is being taken out systematically one by one, it almost makes it look like they're 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 not going to succeed in their mission, that their their options are hopeless and Cobra are you know all powerful. Absolutely. But as, yeah. as as we learn and that is that's shocking, you know, when as you see that their their attempts at resistance just uh, fail. At, at every every single turn but to get the lucky break long arm manages to get the explosives in there even though it costs him his own life you know you could say that the objective has been achieved yes yeah. really there's not many people left on the team at this stage 
uh, then I suppose we, the the bats turn up and find the kind of damaged bat, which is kind of dragging itself along the floor, very much like Terminator style. Its yeah. head's been blown off, but it's still operational. So the the three bats kind of get bring it to its feet, and they continue this this kind of trek towards finding uh, Tunnel Rat, which is really again quite you know really dark. Like these like four of them now, even though one of them you know you'd hope would have been killed has is actually still operational and that's you know tunnel rat's kind of got his work cut out for him hasn't he and he's also been shot tunnel rat as he dived into the water the the bat managed to free his arm before his head blew up and took a few shots at him underwater and caught him in the shoulder so shoulder yes so uh he's kind of he does have an injury going into the next scene doesn't he and the next scene is i mean again the artwork is beautiful so we have a uh, tunnel rats kind of followed the current in the sewer he he's uh coming up with this um kind of nexus point where all the different uh sewers kind of drain in or, or flow into and it's policed by a lot of cobra troopers or cobra vipers yeah and he you know he secretly tries to climb out of the water secretly and he spotted the open fire on him. They, they refer to him as a terrorist. Yeah, they t- I think he gets another uh, hit. He's shot in the in the in the calf. Yeah, uh, at this point, but you know he fights back. He's got some grenades, and he takes out the he takes out the the, you know, the vipers with the use of you know his grenade and then shooting it with a pistol, so that it explodes high up in the air. Really nice move. You know, obviously shows sign of you know, military training and some serious skill. Yeah. And now he's kind of cleared this path. The Vipers are kind of taken out. He's, uh, it's, it's pretty ruthless. Th- this whole, all this action that happens and then the bats start to emerge. They've, they've been tracking Tunnel Rat through the sewers and they start to come out. And they're, they're coming out of the water now at this point and he has to flee into the tunnel and we get another flashback at this stage. Oh, no, now it's high tech. He gets his skull smashed by a bat during the assault so yeah um, so now we're up to eight and high tech again is another one of those kind of characters who i would say hasn't had you know a great deal of love over the years and now he gets in paul Allen's issue only to be destroyed immediately <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I would probably class high tech as a maybe kind of like a C list character, but again, pretty harsh way to go as well by the bat. And uh, at this point, Tunnel Rat has kind of hit the end of the line. He's in a dead end. The bats are closing in, and we get these two panels. We see the four bats silhouetted in the archway, and then this kind of close up of the lead bat and the kind of those sort of red marks on its face as they're closing in on him. And you think that's it, it's the end of the line. And even Tunnel Rat thinks it's the end of the line. And he's about to pull a pin and, you know, effectively commit suicide when he realizes the bats aren't shooting. Yeah. And it makes him pause and think. And uh, this is pretty cool. What happens next? So he just, he realizes that the reason they're not shooting is because of this leaking water that's kind of coming through, or, you know, this condensation was kind of dripping through the brickwork. And he kind of just makes the assumption that there's a water, the body of water behind this wall. So he basically just unpins a grenade, thinks like, you know, and but then you think, oh, you know, he's going to like, you know, kill himself as well as, as taking his bats out. In actual fact, he drops the grenade, jumps up to the ceiling where the pipes are, pulls himself up using one of the bats heads as a little platform to get the kind of impetus to get up there. And as he kind of wraps himself in the pipes, the explosion goes off, takes the wall out, and the water rushes in and takes out all the battle android troopers. And that's where the Vipers and this kind of Viper leader, as it were, kind of go, right, that's enough. I'm going to go see this for myself. So we kind of flash then to, it's outside. We see the lid off a, a drain being lifted off, or off, off a, sewer, a sewer lid being lifted off, and tunnel rats climbing out. And the leader of the facility and a Cobra Viper are right there waiting for him. And not for the first time, Tunnel Rat thinks, this is it. It's game over. Yeah. But he keeps finding, and I love this about this character, the way Paul's written this, he keeps finding the resolve to fight on and not just give up. Anybody else might have just quit at this stage um, and let themselves be executed, which is effectively what's about to happen. But he makes one last attempt. He kind of rolls out of the way manages to knock over the head of the Cobra facility, tackles then the Cobra Viper and captures the Cobra Viper and with a gun to the head. And now we have a face-off between Tunnel Rat 
and the head of the Cobra facility. And this is where, like, you know, obviously Tunnel Rat's kind of got the gun to the guy's head and the, and the, and the Viper leader kind of stands up and they have this kind of little back and forth. And he says, he says, just let me go. No one else has to die today. And the Viper leader says, you served us well. And he's talking to the Viper. And the Viper's like, no, wait, I can continue to. And then bang, bang, shoots Ugh. him twice, dead. Tunnel Rat kind of throws the, the Viper at the Viper leader. And then they're both kind of like face off with the with the guns in you know pointed at each other and he says you've killed so many of my people today you expected me to let you go for the life of one more and he said no i expected you to kill him and waste the rest of your ammunition and he's like what no and it's like click 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 <laughs> and then he just shoots him in the kneecap and walks away yes. so it doesn't even kill him he just shoots him in the kneecap so there's a possibility we may even see this guy again down the road and uh of course, we're still not done for for, for G.I. Joe deaths at this point. As Tunnel Rat is walking away, we get a final flashback. And he talks about their, you know, he after the mission, he made it back to the safe house. And uh Dusty was, was with him, but they, of course they were tracked by the Vipers, tracked back to the safe house, and it was Dusty sacrificed himself so that Tunnel Rat could escape down into the sewers and dusty i would probably argue here is the biggest name on the yes. list of all of them i think he's you know obviously he's had a huge role in the sunbow animation massive in the comics multiple figure versions i, I don't know like I, maybe heavy duties had more with all of the kind of like newer incarnations of the character but still like D- dusty for me is probably the biggest name in this list and he's he's I, last I agree, as well. Yeah. He's, last, he's almost, last. Yeah, look like a big, almost like a very big kind of sent, like you know, sign off. He's like, we're going. This is what we're going to finish with, and it's going to be a big name. So, and really, at this point, then Tunnel Rad makes it to the the evacuation point where Shipwreck is waiting for him. And when Shipwreck asks him, "Where's the rest of the team?" and he says, "It's just me." I love how Ryan Kelly's illustrated the, the look, the expression yeah. on Shipwreck's face. I mean, he's shocked absolutely shocked they kind of head off out to sea and um on the way they learn you know shipwreck learns from tunnel rat that they managed to destroy the facility and there'll be no more bat brains for the transcarpathian assembly line and uh we kind of finish where we where we started because he turns around he says to tunnel rat you know what we're going to win this war. I know, the complete opposite of what Heavy Duty said at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love that that last panel as well, like where it's like Tunnel Rat, tunnel rat and then a close-up of his face and then they're kind of all kind of getting closer to the submarine and getting on the submarine. I just think that's such a lovely kind of finish to the comic as well. Absolutely brilliant. And that final expression on Tunnel Rat's face as we come to the end, where you can see he's... He's committed and he does believe, he believes they can win. A little he's, smirk kind of emerges. A little smirk. It? Yeah. And it's like he's come from, you know, being in the dark, believing that there is no hope to suddenly he has hope. And I think that's a great way that, that, that Paul has kind of developed the character of Tunnel Rash over the course of this issue. Absolutely. I think I was, I was really impressed with this one. Really, again, like brutal, this issue. Obviously, a lot of character deaths and that they were all kind of really impactful as well like each each name although there are a lot of kind of you know like b and c list characters in there there's a few real big names in there for me like you know obviously dusty's big heavy duty ripcord dial tone these are all like major players for the most part in you know most gi joe iterations so it's very kind of powerful to have some of these names taken out in this issue and again it really adds to tunnel rats kind of character his kind of perseverance his like ability to keep going despite all of this horrible stuff that's going on when we look at the other teams in this gi joe universe like say tiger's team for example they're really close and you can only imagine that and and, you know they're not the only team that we've seen uh in in the gi joe uh, base back in america but you can only imagine that this team must have been really, really close as well. Yeah. And uh, so Tunnel Rats not just lost; they're not just team members; like they're best friends that he's lost. It's it's been a rough ride for him on this episode. It really has, hasn't it? And uh, I mean, what would you give this one out of uh, out of the, what would you give this as a potating, Brian? Let's go go full five here, full five potatoes in this one. I mean, every month the the, the team on this are knocking it out of the park. You've got obviously. 
you know, Paul and Brittany are kind of constant there in all the issues. The, the illustration varies. It's, it's predominantly Chris, but it, we get a few guest artists in here. So we've got Ryan Kelly this month. But the, the quality of the work, the writing, the illustration and the colouring every month is just amazing. This is one of the best IDW publications at the moment. And if you are not buying this, what are you doing? Start get. <laughs> Place an order. Place an order and start picking it up. Amazing. Uh, I <laughs> of course, have to, we've spoiled it all for you now. <laughs> I do have to agree, though. I think this is a this is a full five for me as well. Really great work from the from the guys again. Like it's just brilliant. I, this is one of those issues I just desperately look forward to. Like, I just want to see what characters are going to be brought in. Um, in this sense, in this case, it wasn't so much what characters were going to be brought in, but what characters were going to be immediately destroyed. So, um, uh, yeah, that was really 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 cool and again like i suppose if you just if you are just using nameless characters or new characters that are getting killed straight away it doesn't have that impact it has much more of an impact when you kill when you know someone like dusty or you know dial tone or spearhead or someone like that bites the bullet as it were so i think um yeah i think it's, it's been an absolute classic issue great great work guys uh all around brian Thanks for jumping on, Matt. We, we've got um, next week. We've got issue ten, which actually came out a few days ago. Yes, but we are we are playing catch up since I got kind of, I suppose, railroaded by Assembly Required last week. So um, yeah, <laughs> this now we're kind of like kind of starting to catch up with ourselves. Next week we should have a Disorder of Battle in the bag. We should have issue ten, Dead Game issue two. We've got a lot of catching up to do at the moment, Ooh. haven't we? Yes, yes. There's lo- loads of great stuff to, to talk about. And there'll be another Real American Hero, hopefully, in the yes. not-too-distant future, too. So uh, uh, looking forward to catching up on, on wrapping up Snake Hunt. Oh, can't wait, actually. <laughs> I'm really excited to get into Untold Tales with you, because some of them look great. Yes. In any case, uh, Brian, thanks very much, buddy. Much appreciated, dude. Uh, my pleasure. That's it for this instalment of the Full Force Comics Burst. Thank you to my awesome co-host, Brian Hickey. See you next time, and as always, Full Force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos, and as always, you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force, and if you would like to contact the show, you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback or questions. We have also started a Patreon page, so if you want to see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content, then check out patreon.com forward slash the Full Force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in. Full Force. And a big shout out to our sponsors, Distant Planet Comics and Collectibles, located at 601 Business Loop 70 West Suite 263, located in the Parkade Centre, Columbia, Missouri. You can visit their website at distantplanetcomics.com and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash distantplanetcomics.